What's going on guys? Nick here, and today we're going to be reviewing my sump. Okay, so today I'm going to be reviewing my sump as promised. First, I'm going to show off my sliding door setup that my, uh, my grandfather helped me build. We have two tracks here, and they allow these doors to slide independently of each other. So they both slide back and forth. Okay, and here's my sump. So I'll start off, I have motion sensor uh, lights. Both sides of my, my cabinet have that. Oh, I'll see if I can grab the other one, because I can't get that one over there. And here's my setup. So like I said in my previous video, I am running a uh, dual drain setup. I have my trickle drain on the left, my full drain or siphon drain on the right, and I have two BRS gate valves on there. Definitely one of the best pieces of my entire tank. Then I have two pipes go down into a giant seven inch filter sock. And that has a combination of the sock and filter floss. That goes down here into this area as you can see. Pretty clean. Uh, I have two 250 watt heaters in here. And then I have my Bubble Magus Curve 7 skimming away. Having a little trouble with the, the skimmer height, I still think I'm going to need to adjust that a tiny bit. That's okay. You can see a piece of my apex here. We'll get to that. Then, if we go to the other side, and again, motion sensor light. I have my emergency drain, and since they are so long, I, this one return line, I had to use two zip ties there to keep it held up. Okay, this will eventually be a refugium area. Um, right now it's just kind of bubble trap, just multi-purpose use. And then I have two uh, eShops 1900 gallon per hour, or not eShops, eFlux 1900 gallon per hour return pumps. I did have to use a little bit of silicone on this one. I was having trouble with a little bit of a leak on it, but that's fixed now. Not a big deal leaking into here, but it's just annoying to hear it drip. Here's my, uh, here's my bubble magus again, as you can see, it's a little, uh, little askew from the PVC, but it's working good, it's pulling out some gunk as you can see. So I do have dual return lines, I have this one, as I shared in the previous video, going up to the top, that side, and this one goes all the way to the other side, so this one works a little harder than this guy. I also have my, uh, my one MP40 just laying down there until I can get it mounted up. There's my, uh, my Planet Aquarium sticker. Turn these lights off here. Okay. And same thing on this side. Just a piece of fiberboard. And if we go back over here, I will go over my uh, Apex setup and some of my controls here. So, we have the two outlets. One of them is this extension cord and the other is my apex and there you can also see how the gate valves are set up they work really nice they're very very controllable so there is my brain here is my EB32 um, don't have it filled surprisingly I have a few things that uh, were causing it to trip I believe so that's what the two slots are open for and then I have my MP40. These cords were looking nice, but that's okay. I have my MP40, one of the ones, like I said, running your reef crest. Uh, it runs up to this one right here, so 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, 10. So 10 out of 12, actually. Um, got a refractometer here. Testing the salinity. This is how I feed. Put my food in here, mix it around, nice slurry. Feed the fish, got some reef roids, some uh, ocean nutrition flakes, and here's the ABCD that I said I was dosing. But yeah, what I did is I used a, uh, I used a, um, like a cabinet, a medicine cabinet for a bathroom, and just took the door off, and I actually mounted my apex, and one of the things you can see, kind of a hacksaw cut. I used a hole saw to hole saw the size out. I just wanted it to be big enough that it would fit all my wires through. So it's actually 
not that much of a mess. I know it looks a little messy right here. Unfortunately, this is like the junction of where the boxes go down. But I do have my one radio box. My two pump boxes go down there. Uh, there are my two pump controllers. They're kind of out of the way so they don't get bumped and messed up by my moving around under the sump. So yeah, I think that's everything for my sump. I just have this this as an open door right now. Uh, I'm going to, I'm planning on adding four magnets to the corners um, so that I can just have a magnet door that I can quickly get in, get out um, to feed my fish. And yeah, there's the tank. And then, just to show, that one return line does come all the way up from the sump, all the way up and all the way up there. So that's a good, it's a good five foot run and then another about three foot up. So it's, it's reaching its max potential there. I think uh, max head height was, I think it was 15 feet, 16 feet. I could be wrong. But yeah, really easy to get into, um, easier to mount than regular doors and as you can see I don't I don't really change the filter sock I actually have that silicone in I just changed the floss um, this is something I picked up on my 90 gallon and I really really do enjoy doing it this way it makes it a lot easier just open it up grab the floss you can see on that side that side right there it's getting a little dirty so we'll see can move it around a little bit will all turn brown so yeah that is my that is my entire sum thanks for watching